was counted down. The box passed from mayor to mayor. None knew what secrets it held, only that it would open when it was needed most. Hi, I'm Johnny, and this is Johnny Likes, the show where I talk about movies that I like. Today I'm going to talk about a family sci-fi adventure from the late 2000s that fell through the cracks. Today, Johnny Likes City of Amber. City of Ember is the story of a couple of young teens who are trying to fix the problems of their small town. This is not your average small town, though. This is Ember City, an underground city made over 200 years ago when the surface world became uninhabitable. The builders of Ember City made a self-sustaining city where humanity could survive until the surface was once again livable in what they estimated to be about 200 years. Sometime over those years, the instructions for safe return to the surface were lost, and Ember forgot what it was. Now the city is crumbling, and young Dune, played by Harry Treadaway, and Lena, played by Searshah Ronan. <laughs> uh, I can't help I can't help but do the like the awful Irish accent when I say it like that. Like that sorry. Anyways, Dune and Lena may be the only hope for saving the people of Ember. This film was written by Carolyn Thompson. It was based on Jean Duprow's novels. And she is responsible for a few pretty big movies throughout the years. The, she wrote Edward Scissorhands and The Addams Family. So she seems to be a pretty good fit for the material. And Gil Keenan directed the movie. And he was also responsible for Monster House, one of my favorite kids' horror movies of all time. So again, we have an appropriate fit. City of Ember was one of a slew of young adult novels to be adapted into movies over the last 15 years or so. When all the movie studios were trying to get their own Harry Potter or Hunger Games. Something with a built-in audience that they could make several of. They made a whole bunch of these types of movies with names that sound vaguely alike and all have kind of 14-year-old protagonists and either have magical settings or take place in kind of post-apocalyptic futures. Your Aragons, your Percy Jacksons, your Wrinkles in Time, your Spider Rick, your Spider Wick Chronicles, your Mortals, your Mortal Engines, your Chronicles of Narnia. You guys get the idea. If you don't have kids or aren't really into young adult fiction, then these names will not spark joy. I have no recollection of this film's release. No previews, no poster, no reviews, no nothing. It just showed up one day on like a clickbait movie article I was reading, and I thought it sounded kind of cool, looked kind of neat, I uh, liked the premise, and so I decided to check it out, and I was pleasantly surprised. This film has an almost pastoral feel to it, despite the the setting. There's no high school drama BS side plots. There's no cackling villain. Uh, the mayor and his aides are the closest we come to an actual villain here. There's no magic. There's no bullies. It's just about a couple kids who think they can make the world a better place and are frustrated by those who are satisfied with this is just how things are and that there's no point in trying to make it better. Oh, but what about the Black House? They're getting worse. They're, Slow they're, they're, down, they're... kid. You have to learn to take things as they come. It also just happens to take place in a fantastical setting, an underground city. It's fairly rooted in reality. They're... The most out out there thing they kind of have is some um, mutated giant beetles and a star-nosed mole. I really like the problem and mystery solving that the kids do here. Putting the clues together of what's really going on in the city and how to fix it, it was lots of fun. At times it did feel like they were getting things a little bit too easy, but I'm sure that helped with the pacing of the film. It does move along fairly briskly, and we don't get too much of a backstory for either Lena or Dune. We get kind of the Cole's Notes version, 
And that's fine, but had the movie been about 15 or 20 minutes longer, we might have gotten a bit more depth to the characters, and we could have gotten a bit more world building even. Speaking of the world, that was the coolest part of the movie, was exploring this underground city. So where do you store new pipe? New pipe? We haven't had new pipe since my second decade here. Seeing everything patched and built upon, this built in layers on top of existing infrastructure. That aspect of the film was really well done. It's not quite steampunk, but if you are a steampunk fan, you, there's a lot to love here. I just wanted to go exploring here more than anything else. It was also pretty neat to see Harry Treadway and Saoirse Ronan here as, in their much younger roles, as they have both went on to do pretty big things and been fairly successful. The supporting cast is also filled with a good amount of familiar faces. We've got Bill Murray and Toby Jones and Tim Robbins and Martin Lando. It's too bad that the film didn't do better at the box office, as I really liked the groundwork that they laid down for the world here. Had this done better, it could have grown into an excellent franchise, as the crew seemed to know exactly what they were doing, both in front of and behind the camera. They knew how to handle the material. Everything was top-notch in my mind, and there are apparently four books in the series, with this being the first. I never actually even knew that this was a series of books until doing this review, as the story seemed to wrap itself up fairly neatly at the end of the movie. It left room for more, but it's by no means a part one of two type deal. I enjoyed the story well enough that I might actually go and check out the books. We've got a pretty imaginative and very easy to look at fantasy that is appropriate for the whole family. It's not too scary for the young ones, and it's not too bland for everyone else. It could have used a bit more backstory for the people side of the story, but overall, I still enjoyed the characters as they were, and I come back to this movie every couple of years. I'm going to give this a 3.75 out of 5. Other family fun to check out. Monster House. It's a good... Uh, yeah, Monster House, good. Nothing but trouble. Uh, yeah, that's one. That one's not for everybody. Labyrinth. That one's great. It's good for everyone. What's your favorite young adult movie series? What's another series that never got finished due to bad box office? What's another fun for the whole family movie? That's it for today. Uh. If you could do me a favor and like and subscribe, it's quick, free, and relatively painless. Plus, it really helps me out. That would be pretty darn cool. Uh, thanks for watching me rant about movies for a little while. And you can tune in next time to see what else Johnny likes.